Sponsored by Ritual. Hello, my beautiful watchers, and welcome to my review of Justice for Mary Beth, the third and final installment of the Maga Hat Romance Trilogy by Liberty Adams. Because I got the other two for free, this book represents the first time that I financially contributed to Madame Liberty. She now has 99 of my cents, minus Kindle's cut. Spend it wisely, you red hat worshipping nutjob. Because this book was published in July 2021, after Trump's eviction from the White House, I held out some hope that we'd get some sort of cope meltdown from the author, but she circumvented this issue by setting it while he was still president and just not acknowledging the possibility that things might not always be that way. To my amused delight though, this book is the first time that Liberty had the chutzpah to write her beloved business daddy president directly into one of her works of fiction. BTW... Can I just say, at the time of this video's recording, Trump is the forerunner for the Republican nomination. Despite him facing nearly 100 criminal charges and indictments, ranging from corrupt business practices to attempted election interference. Just in case this video is against all the odds being viewed by some future generations centuries from now, we know. We are aware that we are living in clown times right now, and we are embarrassed. Anyways, Justice for Mary Beth. Despite what the title might imply, it's got nothing to do with false imprisonment or a lawsuit or anything really to do with injustice. It's just a dude's name. Yeah, Liberty named her romantic interest Justice. The title of this book is basically Bob for Jane, Jeffrey for Susan, Michael for Gladys. Let's synopsisize. Mary Beth, the most successful, award-winning real estate agent in the tri-state area and volunteer for the Trump re-election campaign is on a mission. Well, two missions actually, but they both involve the same person. Her company wishes to buy a plot of land owned by a Mr. Justice J. Journey IV and turn it into a golf course. Mr. Alliterative also happens to be the last registered Republican in her district that needs to fill out a questionnaire so that she can be entered into a competition to meet her personal hero and role model President Donald Trump. She believes that winning this competition will lead to a job at the Trump Foundation and getting the mega-rich, gold-plated lifestyle that she feels she deserves. Apparently being the absolute best in your field isn't sufficient to apply for a job in this universe. You also have to have competition winner on your resume. Or possibly it's the meeting Trump part that she believes is necessary to get a job in his company. Honestly, this competition never ceases to be confusing. If you have to get 100% completion to even qualify, how do they judge the winner? It's not a lottery because she tries and fails to find out where she is in the rankings at some point. It also seems wildly unfair. Fuck people who live in more densely populated districts, I guess. I can't remember what state this is supposed to be happening in, and to be honest, Liberty is so inconsistent with details, it probably changes from chapter to chapter anyway, so let's just just assume it's taking place in some deep red territory. Somewhere remote enough that the big city real estate girl is feeling out of place. Here she was, clad in grey wool slacks and a white button-down shirt a la Brooks Brothers, with low-heeled Manilow Blanick pumps, peering through her windshield at the sea of ankle-deep mud and the burned-out shell of what was once somebody's home. Congratulations, Liberty! I am awarding you this trophy for clumsiest exposition of someone's clothing in fiction. This isn't the only time she pulls the here she was cliche in this book either. Anyway, she trespasses onto the private property and sees the skeletal remains of a burned out house. Mary Beth wondered at the cause of the fire. She shuddered, hoping no lives were lost, though most certainly family mementos were. Bibles, china plates and silver, photos, baptismal certificates, marriage licenses, her heart felt a stab of sorrow. Ah yes, all the things that you can be absolutely certain every single American household has without knowing anything about them. She only forgot to mention the family crucifixes, rosary beads, and whatever they give you for doing First Communion. Not everyone's a Christian, Liberty! She then finally meets the elusive Justice, who proceeds to point a shotgun right in her face and demand that she get off his land! Mary Beth isn't as concerned by the deadly weapon as I probably would have been in her place, and proceeds to offer him three million dollars for his land, which makes him laugh uncontrollably before chasing her off his property. Of course, with a meeting with the Donald at stake, Mary Beth isn't going to give up that easily. She also can't stop thinking about how handsome Justice looked while laughing at her and waving a gun 
Anne around like a psychopath. She relishes the challenge of bringing her opponent around on the matter of selling his land, using the incredible negotiating skills that she learned from reading The Art of the Deal, and returns to Justice Land the next day. The other hand was held out offering a handshake. In order to accept her offer, he had to relax his hold on the gun, which would give her a power over him he did not wish to relinquish. It took force of will, but he tightened his hold over the shotgun and stood her down. Wow, that was the most insecure shit I've ever read in my life. The dude needs to be clutching a gun at all times in order to feel more powerful than a real estate agent. And now, a quick word about this video's sponsor. It is never too late to start a new routine or ritual, if you will, and incorporate a healthy habit into your daily life. But it does take time and consistency, so to give you as much help as possible, Ritual is offering 30% off your first month of a range of products for different life stages. Ritual helps people fill in the gaps in their diet with no shady additives, fillers, or colorants making them vegan-friendly, non-GMO, gluten-free, allergen-free, and containing no added sugar. These two easy-to-take capsules provide 10 nutrients to support a strong foundation for your health. Their Essential for Men line contains 10 high-quality nutrients like vitamin A, D, omega-3, and zinc. The delayed-release capsule design is gentle on an empty stomach, and this might sound like a minor thing, but there's a mint tab in every bottle to keep your vitamins smelling and tasting fresh. Now, that probably looked fake because small, fast-moving objects tend to disappear when I green screen, but I assure you I was very cool just now. So again, as part of a small step that helps support a healthy foundation for your body, Ritual are offering 30% off your first month. Scan my QR code on screen or visit ritual.com slash dominicnoble30, promo code dominicnoble30, to start today. BT dubs all of Mary Beth's confidence leads up to her asking him again and him saying no. That was her big art of the deal plan. She then proceeds to tell him that the land is going to be worth an awful lot more soon, which is the single worst thing you could possibly do in a negotiation. Then when he shockingly says no again, she calls his house stupid and runs away. I have not personally read the art of the deal, but if this is the business acumen you can learn from it, that uh actually makes perfect sense considering Trump's history with abstract failure. To be fair, it would be quite hard to negotiate while someone is displaying a criminal lack of gun safety right in your face, but she knew that that was going to be the situation when she was internally bragging about how she was going to win him over. While she's off trying to figure out how she could possibly have failed, the narrative switches to justice for a while to work through a subplot involving some convoluted personal history. Apparently, his great-grandfather, Justice I, had stolen the land that he now owned from a rival settler family because it had the only source of fresh water in the area, a move that eventually resulted in him getting literally lynched. Being murdered was apparently not sufficient punishment for this, as several generations later, a judge ordered that the spring be leased to the rival family's descendants for 25 years, and they'd built a bottling business around it. Again, I am no business expert, but it seems unwise to me to sink your capital into a business that you know is going to lose its only resource after a certain amount of time. Fortunately for them, on the day of the lease's expiry, Justice offers to partner with his former bitter enemy to keep the business going. Because even though they disagree, they can put aside their differences to blah blah blah, civility politics bullshit, blah blah blah. Getting back to the main plot, Mary Beth returns yet again and finally manages to convince Justice to at least fill out the questionnaire, then immediately proceeds to pressure him into giving the answers that she wants. Justice then realizes that he's in love with her. I am not kidding. First meeting, chases her off with a shotgun. Second meeting, chases her off with a shotgun. Third meeting, he's in love. He manages to show the bare minimum common sense to not lead with this and simply asks if he can see her again. She nearly dropped the phone. Her face turned white. She didn't answer, but just backed away. Her eyes were on fire with confusion. She was shaking her head, but no words came from her mouth. She seemed to be unaware of her actions. A few feet from her car, she opened her hand and glanced down at the phone, then clutched it to her chest and grasped his jacket closed around her with her other hand as if for protection. She fled to the Escalade, opened the door and jumped in. The Escalade roared away, flinging mud behind it. Really? A shotgun to the face is fine, but getting asked out gets this incredible overreaction? It's true that someone getting caught off guard by a romantic gesture and panicking is a common trope in fiction, but when writers say panic, they usually mean something like 
saying something stupid in the heat of the moment, or blurting out a yes or no before thinking. It's not usually the literal, sheer, bowel-loosening terror that Mary Beth just displayed here. It's like, damn girl, have you never been asked out on a date before? Neither she nor Justice mentions this bizarre reaction when he comes to visit her in her office the next day and, uh... In invites her to bury his mother. Once again, I am not kidding. His mother's ashes have been sitting on a shelf for eight years, and he's decided that now is finally the time to bury them in the family plot, and he wants her to join him. I defy you, my beautiful watchers, to think of a weirder first date than this, but apparently Liberty thinks it's a sweet notion, because she plays off this impromptu two-person funeral as a sweet bonding moment, after which Justice proclaims his love for Mary Beth. Alas, M to the B still wants to follow her dreams of financial success, and discovers that she won the competition! Wow. Okay, so, 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 so. My beautiful watchers, you, you know how in the third act darkest moment there's sometimes a wise mentor figure who inspires the protagonist, whether it's making them realize they're in love or encouraging them to finish their quest or whatever. Well, guess who fills that role in this book? And you are here to buy this place how many times now? Three, Mr. President. Three's good, Mary Beth. Three's good. He looked her square in the face. It's important not to get too attached to one deal. Most of them don't work out. Very few do. Too many things can happen. Circumstances change. Your competitor undercuts you. People change their minds. Laws change. People fall in love. President Trump was drawing connections between her and Justice Journey that she had never noticed, but then he was older than she and very much wiser. She loved him as leader of the free world, felt like he would do anything to keep the country safe. Things will work out for the best. Have you thought of living there yourself? If the owner is in love with you and the property is so valuable, well, he's got two reasons not to sell. Maybe he's waiting for the right person to come along. Have you ever thought of that? And you say you love the place. The president sounded like a wise grandfather, so kind, but it wasn't the response she had hoped for. Love had nothing to do with the deal, yet he was talking about love and ignoring the deal. Love was all wrong. It ruined any chance of turning a resistance seller like Justice Journey into a willing negotiator. Mary Beth wanted negotiation, not love. Yep, in a conversation that is way too coherent to actually sound like the real Trump and his verbal diarrhea, the Tangerine Menace helps Mary Beth realize there's more to life than fame and fortune, and that she's in love with Justice as well. So, she gives up on her lifelong dreams, turns down the job offer, and runs back to him. That is the role that Liberty wrote for her lord and saviour, Trump. Is there a word for being morbidly overjoyed while simultaneously incredulous? I mean, for one thing, of all the people in the universe to suggest that a happy family life is more important than making money, Mr. paid hush money to the porn star that he had an affair with right after the birth of his child is the font of sage romantic advice that you're going with, Liberty. But yeah, thanks to Captain Truth Social, she moves back to Justice Land and agrees to move in with him. The end. I mean, damn, I thought the romances in the past two books were rushed, but this is a new record. The longest conversation these two have before falling in love was a five-question survey. If you added up all the time that these two spent together before agreeing to spend the rest of their lives together, it would amount to significantly less than the runtime of Paddington 2. I have waited for my luggage at the airport for longer than these two spent in each other's presence before settling down together. There is more dialogue in a Gen Takakoski animation than words exchanged between them before the romance blossomed. Classic Disney movies have longer courtships than these crazy people required before deciding they were the one. Liberty's ability to be so astoundingly inconsistent within such a small amount of writing will never cease to amaze me. Justice did not own a suit. His net worth, a considerable sum, must speak for itself. Two chapters later, Justice emerged from the forest. His hair was neat and he was dressed in an old fashioned suit of black wool. Incidentally, what he was doing lurking in the trees in a three piece is never explained or even commented on. 
She also can't seem to decide if Justice is rich or not, sometimes, as you just saw, claiming he had a considerable net worth, while other times talking about how he was sustaining himself on a meagre income and hunting for a living. So, if Ladies First was about owning the libs, Orma's family was about the magic of parenthood, this one feels like it has more of a religious vibe. For example, there's an entire psalm copy-pasted into the middle of it. Liberty continues her tradition of writing the most, like, bizarre shit. Like, Mary Beth decides that she likes this guy already while talking to Trump as if she hasn't been worshipping the fascist baboon all the way through the book until this point. You know how writers sometimes like to imply that their characters aren't going to be romantically inclined, so it's more dramatic when they do fall in love? Well, Liberty tries to achieve this by just having one of her characters straight up say, there's going to be no romance, multiple times. The first time before she even meets the guy. <sighs> you know, I'm really not sure what else to say about this book. It's very, very short short, just like its predecessors, though Lord help me, it doesn't feel that way when you're reading it. Thank you for joining me on my journey to get the 100% completion bonus on the MAGA hat bullshit, my beautiful watchers. It was really not worth it. Ladies First was at least highly amusing due to how batshit off the rails devoid from reality it was on every level. Justice for Mary Beth exists in the same propagandist world, but unfortunately just lacks the same level of crazy. It's better written than Almost Family, supporting my theory about that book having been written a long time ago. Again, I'm not saying it's good, it's just better than that crap. Before we part ways, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're new so my channel doesn't die and I don't have to become Sir Terry's full-time talent agent trying to break him into show business. He's not a very good actor. Much love and appreciation to my patrons of honor, Shelby Holtz, April Mack, and Curtis Charles Jr. Shout out to Il Nedge for the credits music, check out his channel for more parody and original songs, and a huge thank you to this video's editor, Sophia Ricciardi, links to her work in the video description. Red, 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 red alert. Hello. Hello, cat. <sighs> Say hello to the beautiful watchers for your uh, traditional Soteri cameo. Get off his land. Get off his land. Get off my land. Get, I'm from Texas. Perfect American accent.